Thank you, Andrea. And thank you for your work over the years to bring all of these issues to the attention of our state government. Thank you. Our next, speak our next speaker is Linda Shosey. She's a proud Latina woman. She's a mother, grandma, wife, and founder and organizer of the Grassroots Community Organization, Mothers for Safe Air and, wa and Safe Water in Tucson, Arizona. In her fight for the human right to clean and safe water, she has dedicated her entire life to protect public health. Linda has become one of the leading voices nationally regarding C PFAS exposures in Latino barrios. Linda lost her child in 2007 due to a rare disease Linda believed was as a result of exposures to numerous toxic chemicals that contain PFAS associated with drinking water contamination on Tucson's Southside Barrio. More recently, Linda has begun initiating a community-led PFAS health study in her community to assess for PFAS in human blood. Linda is also part of the National PFAS Coordination Contamination Coalition advocating for PFAS regulations. Linda. Again, my name is Linda uh, Shosi. I am in Tucson, Arizona, and I'm going to share with you my presentation titled PFAS Fall on the Wild Wild West State of Arizona. Well, the problem we all know already uh, exist around the uh, PFAS issues here. I'm going to just skip through these um, through these first um, slides just to to be able to get through it quicker because this is all stuff that we already know. Where are PFAS found? How? What are the main routes of exposures to PFAS? And what are those health effects that we already know about? Um, also, we also know who are the main polluters or manufacturers of the PFAS chemicals, um, 3M, Buckeye, Chemar, uh, Tyco, and National Foaming Corporations. I also included on this slide um, the Biden administration and what they're doing about the PFAS issues. Um, currently, that what I know is on February 22nd, um, EPA Acting Administrator uh, for Water, Ridica Fox, issued two actions in support of the agency's authority to, in consideration of possible PFAS new drinking water standards. Um, those include the EPA repro reproposing the fifth uh, UCMR, and also the agency has is reassuring final regulatory determinations for PFAS under the Safe Drinking Water Act. In the state of Arizona, we are uh, corporate polluters are four sites within the DOD um, operations. In the city of Tucson area, PFAS contamination corporate source pollutes are the Morris Air National Guard and the Davis Mountain Air Force Base, Air Force Plan 44. In 2019, PFAS detected detections were between 11 to 13,000 parts per trillion. More recent results show little changes times that to 100 times. I, I used an exposure mapping study to conduct my uh, presentation. My first question was, where are PFAS environmental exposures located? As you can see on the map here, these are the Air Force bases that are impacting our Southside community. You can see the, the toxic plumes spreading out throughout our community. Also in conjunction with the Tucson International Airport Superfund site. I also found out that some drinking waters in our community had been closed as a result of PFAS contamination. Most of these wells longly served a predominant Latino population where I grew up on Tucson South Side. Some of these drinking water wells are located less than half mile from people's homes and schools where our children live, learn, play, and pray. My disease mapping study summary is about how I did uh, this project more because I wanted to know if there is any correlation between exposure and lupus, which is a cancer disease. So our local community group began a series of health assessments in the community by door-to-door -door surveying the hotspot area starting in 2014. The data myself and others have collected found that the higher rates of cancer around the Tucson airport led the county health director, Dr. Garcia, to further investigate the Tucson airport Superfund site area. 
we wanted him to help us see if there is any exposure and health effect patterns in the area we should be focusing on. In 2017, he did review an epidemiology study. He conducted an epidemiology study. Uh, he went back from 2010 to 2014 by zip codes 85706, being the hotspot Tucson International Airport area. He reviewed 23 different primary care areas in Pima County, Arizona. The results reviewed were, sorry, The results he reviewed were indicating a significant invasive cancer incident rates than those of Tucson Foothills areas, as you can see here on the registry. My disease mapping study questions were, are, where are these diseases occurring in Tucson and are we sicker than people living in the foothills? I found out that people living on environmental justice communities and minority low income populations and living in highly were living in a highly exposed areas, which shows trends of higher immune system diseases occurring near the Tucson Airport, Morris Air National Guard, where when people compared with people living in the foothills. We are so sick and tired of these people's cries landing in deaf ears. We cannot rely on state, CDC, and other local government officials who continue turning their backs on the people impacted. Meanwhile, thousands of people in our neighborhood are inhaling, cooking, and bathing in PFAS highly tainted water sources. Our mission is not to protect water and life for your sakes, but for the sake of our Father in heaven who created both heaven, water, and life. Our obedience to Christ convicts us not to be ignorant to the devil's devices, but to love our community members. EPA's health assessments do not acknowledge long-term exposures and adverse health effects, nor socioeconomic impacts on the people affected. Due to the lack of funding, the Environmental Justice Superfund Environmental Justice Provisions continue to fail. Meanwhile, thousands of contaminated sites remain unclean for more than 40 years, such as ours. The sites that have been completed are white or upper class populated areas. The heart of the PFAS plume mapping study and population in my community are um, clear. We are an environmental justice community with a large minority low income population the plume is a three mile stretch along the 12th Avenue area, as you can see here, and northwest and northeast of the Los Reales Road here. Within a 24 square mile area, approximately 700,031 people in the Tucson area are served by the Tucson Water Recharge and Recovery Facility. 9,000 people per square mile are living within these boundaries for this site. It's reported a community population of 675,686, 90% of which identify as Latinos. We also found out that a pipeline convenience of reclaimed water connected to the Tucson Airport facility plume is located only 50 feet from a drinking water well and sidewalk that serves the C.E. Rose Elementary School and C.E. Rose neighborhood located on the corner of 12th Avenue in Michigan here in this area. Our mapping data that we receive for the Barrio Centro population is again, Culprit Davis Mountain Air Force Base located within the Tucson Basin here. Approximately over 2,400 impacted residents living on Tucson Southside Barrio Centro are served by public water wells, highly laced with more than one PFAS. 90% are reported to be Latinos. There is also a significant group of over 50,000 Mexican immigrants living in this area. Disease mapping for other sources 
which means that there are not just Air Force areas that are impacted, but are being the sources, but also we have a Superfund site that has also distributed to the water contamination. The blue shaded area is not the PFAS plume itself, but it presents the community-wide exposures to PFAS coming out from the city of Tucson water distribution area, also known as A zone, and several PFAS contamination sampling points here. The SPs are your sampling points. The Environmental Justice Task Force gave birth in Tucson from a scary death experience. Many people ask me why I got involved in the fight for human rights to the freedom of speech and the human rights to clean water and demand government transparency and accountability. I got involved because I witnessed the death of my daughter. Her last words to me were, Mom, I'm scared. Hearing your child saying, he, Hearing your child saying she's scared while she's passing away is extremely devastating. My daughter left her baby in this world without a mother and the daughter was not the one to blame. On the news, me and my children used to hear the talking about the water contamination. I used to turn the TV off because it was a nightmare to us. Unfortunately, my nightmare began seeping into my walking life and there was no way to escape it. With the loss of my daughter, financial struggles among my children and raising my other children, it all became overwhelming. But out of this devastation, I knew that I needed to find out why my daughter got so sick. Doctors treated her very poorly because she was young and she was a pregnant Latina. I knew this part of the problem, but little did I know that the water poisoning was king culprit to our suffering. From then on, we have been advocating, organizing, educating, and empowering environmental justice, Latino populated communities all across the country. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think we're, I think we're all moved to hear your story. I'm impressed by how you, Linda, and people like you across the country have responded uh, to tragedy by taking action, because that's what it's going to take. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity.